And welcome to Intro to Java and AP Computer Science A with Tokyo EdTech, that is me. In this video, we're going to be looking at primitive types and math. Basically, what we're looking at today is numbers. So here are the coding concepts we'd like to cover here. Uh, first is data types. Uh, data has a type, which I'll explain here in a little bit. Um, in the previous lesson, we learned how to print hello world. So now we're going to learn how to print with variables, which are you know, represent numbers. Uh, or store numbers, where they want to look at it. And then we'll also talk a little bit about the variable naming rules, because uh, there are rules. We'll talk about how to do math on various numbers. We can add some numbers, we can subtract some numbers, etc. Et Another thing you'll find very common in coding is where we change the value of a number. So we add to it or we subtract from it. it could be one, could be two, could be more, depending on the problem we're trying to solve. And then we also have something called the math class, which has some built-in methods that we can use to do some math we'll see here later. Let's go ahead and get started. So just to review from last time, as you may recall, hopefully, we need to create a class and we need to give it a name. And the name is capitalized. The first letter is capitalized. Internal words are capitalized. And this name must match exactly the file name, so primitive types and math.java. So the class is primitive types and math. And if we're going to execute our program, we need a main method. So this just basically memorize that. It's public static void main uh, string square brackets args. And we have our curly braces. So this is our standard Java program style. So before we get started, so let's, let's take a look at the different data types. Now I have this website here, uh, W3Schools. I highly recommend it. Check it out. It's got a lot of great information. And you can just, you can see over here, it's got all kinds of stuff about Java. It's got JavaScript. It's got basically everything. This is one of the best websites, I think, for learners uh, to use, well, at least once you have a little bit of knowledge. You can see actually up here all these, uh, things that you so you'll see here, the data has a type. And today we're looking basically at numbers. So you can see the data type called byte. Um, each one has a size, and this is the amount of memory that it takes up. So obviously smaller, smaller the memory, the fewer values it can hold, uh, for lack of a better term. So you can see it ranges here from one byte, two bytes, four bytes, eight bytes, uh, four bytes and eight bytes, one bit and two bytes, depending on the type. You can see over here, so a byte is one byte, <laughs> go figure, and it can store whole numbers, so not, not fractions, so not decimals, from negative 128 to 127. Let's go ahead and see what that would look like in coding. So I'm gonna go ahead and say byte, and I'm gonna say age, because that's definitely under 127 in my case, thankfully, I guess. And I'm gonna go ahead and compile that. And it compiled successfully. Uh, now, if I run this, of course, nothing happens because we didn't print. But this is the pattern you need to understand. So it is the, the type, and you'll see this over and over and over again. It is the variable name and equals, and then whatever the value is that you want to give. So this type is bytes, variable name is age equals, and the value is 51. Now, if you just from a few seconds ago, the maximum value is 127. So let's see what happens if we try to make it 128, which is too big. Pilot, and you see here, we've got a error, incompatible types, possible lossy conversion from int to byte, and it's pointing at 128. So it's telling us that there is a loss of information here. Um, the reason it says something about int uh, is that by default, it tries to reconcile this or interpret this as a byte. Let's put that back down to the, or sorry, as an int. So let's put that back down. And let's go ahead and print this. So system.out.println, I'm gonna go ahead and print h. I'm gonna go ahead and compile that. It's compiled successfully, I'm gonna run it. You can see here is the 50. So if you, so this shows us that we can print whatever values that we want to print with our uh, system out print line uh, statement. Now, what I can also do is I can add some text here. I can say, hi, uh, my age is quote plus age. Let's see what that looks like. 
So it's kind of weird here because we got a plus, but we're not adding numbers, we're adding text and a number. So when we're using println, print line, print line, depending on how you want to say it, it will add, combine those together as text. You see here, hi, my age is 51. Now I'm like a little bit, uh, I don't know, strict about this sort of thing. Uh, I don't like that because it's a sentence and sentences should have periods at the end or whatever makes me points. So you can see here how I've added plus age plus period. And if I run that, see my age is 50. A couple things just to show you here. The spaces here don't matter. Um, I, just, I just put the extra spaces in because it makes it a little bit easier to read, but that is perfectly acceptable. However, the spaces inside the quotation marks do matter. So if there's no space here, okay, run that, you'll see that there's no space here. So that, that looks nice. Uh, um, so anyway, so byte, uh, we go back to this, so we have byte, short, int, and long. These are our whole number, me, these are our whole number values. Um, so you can see that each of them has a slightly different range. Now, if you're on, say you're doing AB computer science, you only really need to use int. They don't use bytes, shorts, or longs. And now there is one thing you gotta keep in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and make a long. Um, so I'm gonna say long, I'll say num of atoms. Let's go ahead and do one, two, three. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if I can compile that. Okay, that one compiled. Let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Let's see how big a number we can do here. And you can see here it says integer number is too large. So let's see. That's ten, 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 ten. That's hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions. And hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, quintillions. So you can see how it's kind of weird. This goes up to nine quintillion, but we don't have, we have less than that. We have quadrillions. Um, so kind of a weird thing. So what's going on here? Uh, this is one of those things that I mentioned earlier. It interprets the, this as an int for some weird reason by default. Um, so what we can do is we're going to actually make a long. We add an L to the end, and that tells the compiler that, hey, this is going to be a long, and we want to make sure it's a long. Um, so if you're going above the size of an int, you'll need to do that. Uh, it's a little thing. So again, same thing here. We can go ahead and print out. We do system.out.print ln, say num of atoms. And you can see how that number is printed out as we expect it. So going back, we also see now that there are two types here, float and double, that store fractional numbers. So these are numbers with decimal points. Let's go ahead and do a couple examples of that. Let's say, float, uh, I don't know. Uh, Say one, two, three, point four, five, six, and spell length correctly. H. I can do system dot out dot print l in, and do that. Incompatible types: possible lossy conversion from double to float. Um, so you can see how it's thinking it is a double. Oh, do we print an F here? <laughs> Not sure. And that, yeah, so same thing with floats. <laughs> no. um, so with longs and floats, you gotta be really careful. You gotta tell it it's a float, or you're gonna tell it's long, sorry about that. Um, but again, if you're doing AP computer science, you're gonna be using ints uh, and doubles anyway. So I'm gonna say double, and we'll say, and I usually use gigawatts, my example, 1.21, say system.out, print ln, uh, quote plus gigawatts plus quote plus. File that and run it. Let's see, we 
Um, so again, you have to tell the computer what data type you're using. Now, if you're coming from Python, or if you're coming from, say, JavaScript, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, but Java is what's called strongly typed language, and you got to tell it up front, uh, statically typed, what, what the type is. And once it's a certain type, you can't change it. That's, that's it. It's done. It's set or good. So those are our main data types with numbers. Um, there's also a couple others here. Um, there's Boolean, which I'll talk about right now. And there's a care type or char type, which has to do with uh, strings, which you'll see in the next unit. But let's take a look at Boolean since they are super duper important. Um, so Booleans. Uh, Booleans have two values. They are either true or they are false. So for example, Boolean is sleepy. It's true. So are you sleepy? Sam. System.out.print ln is sleepy. And compile it, run it, and you'll see true. Um, so Booleans can have true value or they can be false. That's it. They, they have no other values. That is all they are done for or used for. Okay. Um, just looking at the naming, now you can see here how I said is sleepy. Uh, this is a common, how can I put it? This is a common style for Booleans. Like has something like you know, has has a gun, bad example, but um, has money, true or false. Um, has permission, true or false. So you'll see that it's kind of like a question. Is sleepy or is not sleepy? There's two possible values. The other thing with naming rules uh, with these variables. So if we take a look at the ones you see up above, um, you can see that you know age equals. You see num of atoms. Notice there's no spaces in here. So if I went ahead and put a space in, said num of atoms. This is a common beginner mistake. I try to compile it, we'll get an error. So it tells you line 10, it kind of points right here, it tells you where the problem is, and it just doesn't like it. So variable names cannot have spaces. The other thing with variable names is you can have gigawatts, you get gigawatts two, you can end with a number. That would be gigawatts two as well. That works just fine. But if you put a number at the beginning, you can't do that, you'll get an error. It will not compile. It says error, not a statement. And double to gigawatts equals 1.21. It doesn't like that. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you are coming up with variable names. Um, so no spaces, uh, capitalize the internal words. So it starts with the lower, always starts lowercase, but of is capitalized, atoms is capitalized. And oops, cannot start. And so those are some of the, the variable naming rules. There are a few other things that there's something called a final static value, but we'll get to that some other time. You'll see that uh, other places. Okay. So those are the basic variable types. And those are the basic variable uh, naming conventions. So next part, we want to take a look at math. Okay, so let's go ahead and do, let's say, int x equals 5, int y equals 10, and then we say int z equals x plus y. And if we do system.out.println z, we should hopefully compile, we should hopefully see 15. Now we could have printed it out like this. X plus, this is kind of a weird one, plus, plus quote, plus Y, quote, plus, uh, quote, quote, plus Z. Now the color really helps here. So, we're taking the value of x, and then we're taking the value of, oh, this should not be in quotation marks, sorry. 
value of y, and we're adding the plus sign, the equal sign, equals z. So if we run that, we see 5 plus 10 equals 15. So this is x here, and plus string plus, and we see y, and we see the equal sign. Okay. So be careful with that. It gets a little tricky as you're trying to type. So we can also subtract, subtract, okay, minus, and run, compile it and run it. If five minus 10 equals negative five, we can multiply. It's not a times, it's not an X, it is an asterisk. So like a keyboard, it's shift eight. Five times 10 equals 50. And division is this little slash, forward slash. And now this is where it gets a little bit weird. So five divided by 10, so if you're good at math, uh, you should say to yourself, well, that should be 0 0.5. But the problem is that these are integers. Z is an integer. So integers don't have a decimal place. So in this case, what happens is the decimal is removed. So we have, so it would be 0 0.5, but the 0 0.5 is not included because it's an integer. Okay. So be really careful with that. So if you wanted to do this correctly, if you wanted to get the correct result, these would have to be doubles. So if I compile that and run it, you see 5.0 divided by 10.0 equals 0 0.5. And there's one more thing called a modulus, um, which gives us the remainder of a value. So if I compile that and run it. So this is five divided by 10. So does 10 go into five? No, it's zero times with five left over. So if I did 10 and five, compiled it ran it. It also gives a zero because five goes into 10 two times. There's nothing left over. I could change this to say six, file it, run it. So 10% six. So six goes into 10 one time and there is four left over. That is the, so that's kind of a little quick, quick introduction to math. So incrementing, and decrement. Um, so if I go back to our slide here, our coding concepts. Um, so we talked about all the different math operators, talked about naming rules. So increment and decrement. So increment means to add to, and decrement means to subtract. So if, let's go ahead and do, well, we have x equals 10. So let's go ahead and do x plus x equals x plus one system dot system dot out print ln x. Okay, so what this does is it adds one to x so x was 10 now it is 11. this is a way to do it we can also do x plus equals one get rid of that Compile it. And again, we get 11. X plus equals one. This is the short form of that. And there's a special one. This is, you'll see this in Java and uh, C type languages. X plus plus, that adds one to 11, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, we can also do the same thing. We say X equals X minus one. This could be five. It doesn't have to be one but we we'll use one for this example. X is 10 and we subtract one, it gives us nine. We can do the short form minus equals one and we'll get the same result. We could do, we also do like times, we can do X equals X times two. A lot of different types of things we could do here. That gives us 20. Um, same thing, we can do X, times equals two, and it gives us the same thing. 
And we also have decrement, which is x minus minus. And that gives us nine. Now, just a real quick thing, you may see this. Uh, this is not something you'll see in the AP, but you'll see it here. You'll see it in other Java places. So if I do this, the plus plus comes after the x. What do you think the result is going to be? Kind of interesting, right? What, what happens here? So let's compile it. And the output is 10. Crazy. But if I go ahead and do this, you'll see that it's 10 here, and it is 11 here, kind of weird. So basically what's happening is it prints the X, then it increments. Okay, so the order that it happens in is probably different to what you'd think. Now, if you wanna do what we wanted to do, which is increment first, we put the plus plus before the X. Again, AP Computer Science students, this doesn't come up on AP, uh, they don't test for it, but it's something you will see. So if I run this, so it increments the 10 to 11, then prints it, and we just printed it. So, yes, yeah, so that's kind of an interesting thing that you can do with adding one, subtracting. Okay, and finally, uh, we're gonna take a look at the math class. Um, now, the math class in Java has quite a few functions or methods that we can use, and to do mathematical operations. Uh, so we're only gonna take a look at a few of these, but there are a bunch of them. So we had x equals 10. Well, let's go ahead and, actually, it's kind of important. I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out. And we're gonna print those. And now just before I, I go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and compile and make sure it's still running, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say double, uh, x equals math.pow, say 2.0, 3.0. Then we'll go ahead and system out.println x. Let's go ahead and see what that result is. That gives us 8.0, okay? Because 2.0, to the 3.0 power. So that's two times two times two. This is 8.0. Notice it is a double. So let's try to see if I do int here and see what happens. Yeah. You can see where it says incompatible types, possible lossy conversion from double to int. That's something we'll cover another time. But suffice to say, it has to be a double, okay? It's just the way it works. Yeah. Uh, we also have math.square root, we can say double y equals math.sqrt, say 25.0. And we have system.out.println. Okay. File that. And we know the square root of 25 is 5.0. Again, notice it is 0 0.0, so it is a double, it is not a, an int. Now there are other math functions such as sine, cosine, tangent, etc. Um, so I'll just do a quick example. So double uh, well, this uh, s equals math dot s i n zero system dot out dot print l n s. File that and run it. It gives me zero point zero. The sine of zero. Is zero now if you're thinking well what about 90 okay which i think should be one it gives us this weird number 0 0.8939 blah, blah 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 so if you're familiar with degrees versus radians um, these are degrees but you need to put radians in here so what you can do is you do math dot two radians 90. so that converts 90 to radians, I think it's pi over two in this case. And then that becomes, that's passed on to the sine method. And that should give us, I believe, there you go. Again, if you're not familiar with math and radians and angles, don't worry about it, but it, it is there. Um, so we have sine, cosine, tangent. Uh, we can convert two degrees and two radians. 
And we also have two other things you might find useful. So system, depending on what your, your focus is here with learning Java. We also have math.pi, which is pi. And we have system.out.println math.e, which is Euler's number. Yeah, if you don't know what those are, don't stress about it. Uh, system, I spelled system wrong. System, did a lot. Pilot, and you'll see 3.14159, blah, 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 and 2.718, blah, blah, blah. That's the natural logarithm. Okay, so, and again, the math, the math, uh, the math class has a lot more functions than that. Those are just the ones that you might run into or you might need, especially pow and square root are for our AP students, um, but you might need sine and cosine depending on what you're doing. And you'll probably need pi at some point, and possibly Euler's number. Depending. So that is that for this video. Let me go back concepts here. Um, so data has a type, so depending on the value that you need, um, so typically the idea is that you want to be efficient with your memory. Now, again, modern computers have tons of memory. You don't really have to worry about it, especially as a beginner. Again, for AP students, you'll be using int, you'll be using double, and you'll be using, using the rest of those. But I will talk you know, from time to time about the others in this video series. Um, and then printing with variables showed how to do that. So you use plus operator about the variable naming rules and then the various math operators so addition subtraction multiplication division and, uh, modulus which you may not have seen before Talked about how to increment and decrement so we can use uh, like x equals x plus one x equals x plus five x plus equals five is a shortcut or for incrementing by one we do x plus plus or plus plus x depending on how the outputs come and then finally there is the math class and you can out more about that so Fine. Anyway, that is that for this lesson. Thanks for watching and uh, on coding.